Apparently this PC is illegal in six states. Yeah. Well, probably not this particular build of it. This is the Alienware Aurora Ryzen Edition R10 gaming desktop, and also the R12s are having issues. And again, it's if you pass a certain energy consumption. And so this base model configuration probably isn't the issue, but if I jacked in some higher end uh, GPUs and CPUs into here and tried to order it to one of these six states, I'd get a message that told me I couldn't. This is what's going on. You'll get this message. This product cannot be shipped. I guess I'm in the way. Thanos snap. Hmm. Uh, this product cannot be shipped to the states of California, Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Vermont, or Washington due to power consumption regulations adopted by those states. Any orders placed that are bound for those states will be canceled. Canceled, guys. High-end gaming is getting canceled. Well, I mean, sort of. What? What is going on? Well, a while back, th there were some laws passed regarding energy consumption of a whole bunch of consumer devices. And this has been concerned. I found this at video cards, but uh, I guess the original report here is coming from the register. And they've contacted Dell, and they do, do confirm that, yes, this was driven by the California Energy Commission CEC Tier 2 implementation that defined a mandatory energy efficiency standard for PCs, including desktops, AIOs, and mobile gaming systems. This was put into effect on July 1st, 2021. That's why we're seeing this now, is this, this stage of it just phased in on July 1st. Select configurations of the Alienware Aurora R10 and R12 were the only impacted systems across Dell and Alienware. Now, we're seeing this now for Dell and Alienware in these particular systems, but theoretically, if other systems from other manufacturers aren't compliant with these energy standards, this could be more of a thing now. Is high-end gaming actually illegal in six states? Ah, why is all of this happening? Well, I went into the uh, the Register article, and they're saying that there's some reports uh, th that fed into, into these concerns. So I guess there's an issue that the total energy consumption by general purpose computing continues to grow exponentially and is doubling approximately every three years, while the world's energy production is growing only linearly by approximately 2% per year. As some of you may know, I'm actually a math teacher, so there's a huge difference between linear growth no matter how steep the slope and exponential growth because exponential increase will eventually always surpass linear growth. So if energy production grows linearly and energy consumption, energy consumption grows exponentially, there will reach a point where energy consumption surpasses production and that's a problem. So I see the concern here. However, here's my issue. I don't think that what's going on here is that individual computing devices are doubling every three years. I think it's just that more of the world is using computing devices and there's getting to be more devices out there. So I think, I, in my opinion here, we're going into my opinion mode, the, the issue really isn't j that I have a high-end graphics card that draws some power. It's just that more people have graphics cards. And that's why we're seeing that, that doubling. So I'm curious if at some point, you know, we're going to see that just kind of level off anyway without the need to make high-end gaming computers illegal in California <laughs> and these other states. By the way, I live in one of those six states, so can I not buy a high-end pre-built? Now, it, since this seems to be uh, affecting pre-built systems, I imagine you can still buy individual components and assemble something yourself. For those of us DIY gamers out there, this shouldn't be the end of the world, but this is still kind of a weird situation, and I bet you guys have a lot of thoughts about this in the comments section. Now, moving on to some other news, although this was the main thing I wanted to talk about today, there's been big news from Intel. So first of all, they've finally fixed their naming scheme. Let me hop out of the way here so we can take a look at this uh, list chart. Boom. So remember how they kept adding on super fins and enhanced and pluses to everything? Well, they're finally fixing that. So we have the 10 nanometer super fin, which is in high volume production right now. And what they were gonna then call enhanced super fin is now gonna be called Intel 7. Now this was still, I believe, technically a 10 nanometer process, but I think they wanted it to be somewhat competitive with seven nanometer stuff. So they're renaming it as Intel 7, and that's gonna be a lot easier 
easier to understand. It's better branding. This is honestly just way better branding from Intel, even if it might be a little misleading calling it Intel 7 when it's what was going to be considered still a 10 nanometer process. Although honestly, guys, all, all the companies are a little misleading with their nanometers and things like that. Anyway, so now what was going to be called Intel's 7 nanometer process is now going to be called Intel 4. And what uh, their next model down will be called Intel 3, which uh, by what it's saying here, it looks to me like it's going to be, you know, a rev uh, enhanced revision of Intel 4. Um, that's kind of what this looks like for me. You can read here about all the, the performance per watt gains and things, you know, pause on this slide, whatever. Now, one thing that's interesting here is past Intel 3, they're planning on going down to Intel 20A. What's the A? That's angstroms. I believe an angstrom is one tenth of a nanometer. So since past this point, we'd be getting down into decimal fractions of nanometers, they're going to move down to the next measurement unit of angstroms, which like I said, are, uh, I believe, one tenth of a nanometer each. So uh, 20 angstroms, I believe, would then be two nanometers. All right, anyway, and that allows them to kind of move on uh, using the A's in the future. And you can see here that we they, they are expecting some good performance per watt gains here, uh, jumping 10 to 15% um, going to Intel 7, 20% for Intel 4, 18% going down to Intel 3. Um, and then, you know, they're, they're just explaining how they're going to get here. So there's a lot of details out here and which, uh, which chips these will be in. Uh, so this Intel 7 here is already now in uh, volume production. Intel 4 we'll see in the Meteor Lake coming in uh, for tape-ins for clients in quarter 2, 2021, and Granite Rapids computer tiles. Anyway, a whole bunch of really interesting stuff here. And um, I don't want to get too bogged down in it, but you guys might want to take a look in my description uh, to get some more of the, uh, the details from some of these articles that are going to cover this in absolutely full detail. I don't want my video to get way too, uh, too long here. But they also showed off at this event, the, uh, the, there was the Intel Accelerated event. I don't know if I named it. That's where all this information is coming from. So this isn't leaks. This is official from Intel stuff. Um, so they showed their Alder Lake client die, the Sapphire Rapids data center chip. Uh, Meteor Lake, we got a picture of that die, and Granite Rapids data center chips, which, by the way, if you count those up, I think we'd expect like 120 uh, cores on there. Um, yeah, they're saying that if you count that up, that would be 120 cores, although, uh, you know, some of those could be disabled due to, you know, yield issues. I don't need to go into all that. But anyway, that's just if you count it out and read into the picture, um, uh, maybe more than we should. Uh, so anyway, they're showing off a whole bunch of stuff here, which I think is awesome. And again, they're teasing the Alder Lake chips, which uh, have confirmed uh, many of the leaks that I and other people have been reporting on, which is to expect this as like a big little design where you have the high performance and high high efficiency chips. And we'll be expecting to see this at the Intel On series. Uh, on October 27th uh, through 28th, 2021, which also lines up with rumors we heard of a launch event around, uh, around uh, I think it was, the rumors were around Halloween, and this, this lines up pretty dang close to that. Uh, and that's when we should see Alder Lake. Okay, also in some uh, processor news, uh, China's been working on catching up uh, some, some of its own domestic products and domestic intellectual property, probably with a whole bunch of stuff stolen from from you know other people too but but technically different and they're, they're doing their own innovations guys i really think it's only a matter of time before chinese processors uh domestically produced are at least as good if not better than anything coming out of uh america or european companies or koreans or whatever uh china's huge and has a, a gigantic economy they're going to be catching up here and apparently this Chinese-built uh, CPU is just as fast as AMD's original Ryzen chips, and I believe also lines up against, like, uh, I think, sixth-generation Intel Core processors. So there's some inf interesting info here. I'm not going to cover it in too much depth because I don't think anybody on my channel here is actually going to be buying one of these. But I am going to be keeping an eye on this because I, I don't know how many years it will take, but it will happen where China at least matches, if not exceeds, uh, everybody else just due to the size of their economy and population, in my opinion. Anyway, um, so also, just a bit of an update. I already covered most of this in yesterday's video. 
Uh, but we've had some wrap-ups of a lot of the rumors regarding the Navi 31 RDNA 3 GPU at the top end being the 7900 XT. One of the main differences we've seen uh, in this one is uh, from apparently uh, image credit here to Orlac, this would be a preliminary block diagram of what this thing would look like. I'll pop out of the way here for a second. So this is what's going on here with your... Uh, 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 512 megabytes of your, your cache here. And I, I think this is just somebody putting together the rumors into what they think the block diagram would be. This I don't think is an official leak from Intel, but I thought I'd just show that to you as an interesting thing. For somebody who didn't see my video yesterday, but is looking at today's, here's basically 3D Center uh, uh, wrapping up a summary of all the leaks that we've seen uh, regarding this chip. And also, as I covered in my video yesterday, the folks over here at WCCF Tech have made a nice chart where if you believe, um, if you believe these production targets, uh, sorry, performance targets, um, this is where uh, RDNA 3 would line up as a 2.5x uh, versus um, this uh, Ampere um, as the uh, 1.0. And then you can see where Ada Lovelace and Hopper perform here. And remember, Lovelace is rumored to be a single chip uh, uh, GPU from NVIDIA, whereas Hopper would be a multi-chip design, uh, more like the RDNA 3 here. So again, don't want to dwell there since I did talk about that a bit yesterday. Boom. And last thing I want to mention today is a little bit of Steam Deck news, because they clarified, again, there was people yelling, ah, that's only targeting 30 FPS. That means that's, that's their target for their h highest end brand new AAA games they'd like to be able to run at 30 frames per second at least. And then it, uh, older games, and it'll be up to the user if you want to target 60 frames per second on your uh, own stuff. They also showed up their unique trackpad and gyroscopic controls in a video from IGN. Now what this reminds me of, do I have my Steam? I don't have my Steam controller next to me right now, but it reminds me again a lot of the Steam controller, except that I guess it has a capacitive joystick. So uh, when you have your finger on the aiming joystick, you can use gyroscopic controls, but you can just take your finger off and then it won't use gyroscopic controls in case uh, they were saying like, you know, in case you just want to move around on your couch, get resituated without your aim going all wild in whatever game you're playing. And they say that this feels very natural as you get used to it. I think that's a cool addition. Also, Gabe Newell is saying that the uh, the Steam Deck isn't designed as a Nintendo Switch competitor, and I, I, that these are targeting different segments of the market. And he says that within 10 seconds of holding one device or the other, you'll know which one is for you. And I completely agree with this. I, I don't think that the the target audience of a Switch is the same as the tar target audience of a Steam Deck, although there is some overlap. If we do some Venn diagrams here, there is some overlap. Um, but I think overall, the core largest segments of those markets are different, and some people might even want both. I have a Switch. I'm not sure if I want a Steam Deck, but it does look pretty cool. All right, this video is running long. I need to shut up. You guys tell me everything you uh, think about all this in the comments section. Huge thank you to the people who hit that join button financially supporting me, and thank you to all my subscribers and viewers. You guys are beautiful people. Have an excellent day. That's in order.